In part one, we built this simple shell for a uh, vacation viewing application. And now in part two, let's uh, spice it up a little by adding some uh, rich text support. So we'll start first by uh, choosing a font we're going to use. I'm going to create a directory. We'll call it resources. And uh, inside this resources directory, what I'm going to do is add a uh, font that we're going to use. And this font is called Lindsay. It's by the uh, Sender Corporation. And uh, it is actually included in the Windows SDK and has uh, licensing terms that, such that you can use it and embed it within your own applications. So we'll set this font family by referencing the directory in which the application li uh, the font file lives and then a hash sign and the font family name. So we'll go ahead and build and run this and you'll see we're now using the custom font. And it's got a, a nice personal feel. Uh, so let's take this a, a step further and add something a bit richer. We'll, we'll remove this uh, placeholder text and let's instead create a frame. And uh, we'll put this point this frame source to a file called intro.saml. Now obviously we don't have an intro.saml yet, so let's go ahead and, and create a new file called intro.saml. And I'm, in this case I'm going to use a, uh, it's going to be a bit of text, so I'll use the WinFX flow document template. Go ahead and add this. And you'll see this uh, prepares us a little flow document tag. Let's change the font family to again be Lindsay. And in this first paragraph, let's make the text a little bigger. Let's say, welcome to my vacation. And uh, second paragraph here, I hope you like it. I had a great time. Let's go ahead, save, build, and run. And now you see that we have our, uh, our text actually showing. Great. So I'm not going to bore you by sitting here and typing out all my stories about my vacation. So I've prepared uh, beforehand a few, um, a few files that we can use. And uh, let's go ahead and intrude these XAML files. And now I've got, uh, I've got uh, some files. And again, you'll notice that these are the same file names that I've used in files.xaml. So what I'd like to do is set up the frame to navigate uh, to whatever uh, photo has been selected in the list box. We'll do this by copying the same binding syntax I've used here. And what we're doing is we're binding to the same source that the list box is using. But in this case, I want to bind to the X path for the href property that we define here in files, which again is here, as you see, chiangmai.xaml. And uh, in order to make sure we have the, the same one that is um, set in the list box, we'll set the is synchronized with current item equals true here. As I go ahead and build, you'll see that now as I uh, select different, uh, different photos here, I'm going ahead and navigating between documents. Now uh, let's take a look here, and you'll notice that we're using the built-in uh, control that we call Flow Document Reader. And what this allows me to do is go ahead and, and scale and change the actual scale of the text I'm reading, along with uh, view in different modes. So in this case, this, here's a two-page mode, or even a more traditional scrolling mode where I can uh, read text in, in more of a web-like view. Now this is a control that uh, comes built in. Let's look at how we actually constructed this layout for this for this content, though. Go ahead and open, open Anchor. And again, you see we just have a flow document tag set at the top. We've set our font family. There's a few properties here that we control. So column gap, in this case, controls the number, the amount of distance between each, each column. And uh, what I've done here is I've created, uh, within a paragraph, we have a figure at the top that displays the actual title of this document. And what the figure does is it allows me to place this uh, content within the a part of the page. So in this case, I've anchored it to the the left and uh, the left of the side of the page, and I've told it to be the entire size of the page of the content of the page. And uh, you can see here, most of this markup should look uh, fairly simple. I've got other figures that contain images, in this case, an image anchor one, anchor two, and I've got paragraphs full of text. And the key here is I didn't do anything anything very sophisticated in terms of setting up, uh, you know, custom code to flow into columns. It just happens automatically and it's built in for me. So in the next part, we'll set up, uh, we'll look at adding some richer content, such as video, in uh, part four.